Friends, it's Monday, and you know what that means. As we've all come to expect, Monday means it's time for a story. Today's story is called Gabby. Um, and right out the gate, we have something kind of interesting because on the dedication page, Stephen Cosgrove has written, at times in life, you will see yourself not as a dashing prince or princess, but rather as a silly, silly clown. For the first time and the only time, I dedicate this book to me. Now, having read this book, I have no idea why he has said this, but uh, it's it's a bold claim. First time and only time. And this was 1985, so he had a, a while to go. Um, so we'll, we'll see what we think that means as we move on through the story. Here we are again, our home away from home, the island of serendipity. Like a warm woolen blanket, nighttime wrapped itself about the trees in the forest of your mind. I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, stop right after that first sentence. Uh, that's it, that is an insane uh, series of words. The forest of your mind, and not even the forests of the mind, the forests of my mind, the forest of your mind. This is all taking place within each of our own <laughs> heads. This is so conceptually confusing. Uh, basically, everybody's waking up. It's morning time. All the creatures, that is, except the bundles of fuzzy fur called furry eyefuls. Um, furry eyefuls are sort of little, uh, you can see Gabby is one of them. Sort of, I'm gonna say, a goblin. Sort of a little uh, hairy, gray, uh, little monster. Um, yeah. Sort of looks like a cross between maybe a Furby and a stone. What I hate about them is that they're called furry eyefuls. This sounds like something you might uh, say after you've been flashed by someone in a trench coat. You know, oof, oh, God. I just got a furry Eiffel. Anyhow, these little uh, godforsaken monsters are waking up, stretching and yawning, quietly beginning to file down to the pond at the edge of the forest, looking for beautiful things. There's something to hate in each of these facial expressions, but this one, these, wh what have these two been getting up to in the night? Because <laughs> this is a very seductive uh, facial expression for a children's book. Now this is when we meet Gabby. Uh, quietly that is, except for one little brown-eyed furry, and I do absolutely hate that they're called furries now instead of furry eyefuls. I think furry is worse. Um, called Gabby. From the moment she woke, Gabby noisily began to tell everyone around her about her dreams from the night before. Um, we all know someone like this, and we've all been this person, but we all know that no one really wants to hear about our dreams. Um, nevertheless, she, she goes on and on. Um, they shush her and she's like, you don't want to hear about my dreams? No, said one of the furries as he took her off to the side of the trail. We're going to the pond at the edge of the forest. It's here that we wish to see the great swans of dawn before they lift their wings and fly away into the morning sky. So just sort of a normal morning activity. They get to the edge of the pond and Gabby says, while we're waiting, does anyone want to hear what happened to me yesterday? Boy, it was just as strange as you could believe. I was walking, shh, the rest of the furries whispered. We're still calling them furries. Um, and the swans appear on the scene. Um, and immediately Gabby says, boy, you guys were right. They are pretty. I saw something almost as pretty last week when I was walking near the mountains at sunset. And then of course the swans fly away. Uh, barely did the furries get a glimpse and they're absolutely furious, livid beside themselves. Uh, they uh, want to kill Gabby. Thereafter, whenever Gabby tried to talk to any of her fellow creatures, they would either walk away or pretend that they had heard nothing more than the rustling of the wind. So basically, Gabby's a pariah now. She's, she's completely shut out from the rest of her little furry society. 
She's talking to trees like a crazy person. And as so often happens, she winds up crying by the riverbank. Um, when she hears a noise, and it is the most beautiful snake she's ever seen. I sense that there is someone there, said the snake. Won't you speak so that I might know where you are? Gabby says, why? Are you blind? And unfortunately, the snake says, yes. <laughs> no, that's not what you want. When you sarcastically uh, ask someone if they're blind, when they say yes, that is a mortifying faux pas. And the snake says, yes, um, my name is the uh, unpronounceable Cartouche. Cartouche? Where do you come up? What nationality is this name? My name is Cartouche, and I can just barely taste your tears. Why have you been crying? I can just barely taste your tears. Gabby needs an adult. That is that is such a creepy... Imagine someone saying that to you. Um, you would scream. Gabby tells Cartouche everything that happened, and uh, he, he basically tells her um, that... Uh, she, he would like for her to tell her everything that she sees because he's blind and he can't see it. Um, now, my little furry friend, your well is full and mine is empty from being blind. So tell me all that you've seen. And then she, you know, blathers on. Now, Gabby, your well is empty. Go and drink deeply from all that you see. When you are filled, you can come tell me. With a happy heart, Gabby quietly set out to see all that she could see. So pretty much she can talk to Kartush now when she needs to talk to people. And sometimes when the time was right, perhaps when watching the flickery firelight with the other furry Eiffels, Gabby would tell a story and then be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so Gabby has learned the fine art of shutting the hell up. And now our friends like her again. Uh, and that, that's it. There's a poem, of course. Here's Gabby by herself watching the swans. We see what we must see. Bright dawn, the sunlights glisten. But sometimes, like Gabby, we must also learn to listen. Now this is a valid, this is a good lesson, finally. Uh, but it's not really what the story is to, if you're a child reading this story and you're a child who, and let's face it, so many of them are uh, just, absolute chatterboxes, insufferable monsters that will never shut their mouths. You're gonna read this story and think, all right, well, I talk too much and nobody can stand to be around me. I need to find a, a creepy <laughs> blind friend, a weird, handicapable friend with a difficult to pronounce name who can taste my tears. And they will listen to me because they can't see. This is, I can't, I just can't imagine this being of any help really to anyone. Um, basically the story just means uh, shut up. And that's what I'm going to do now that the story is over. How was that for a smooth segue into an ending? Um, have a nice week. And I will talk to you next Monday with another story.